Comedy Throws 3 is an RTS strategy game featuring four distinct factions, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. And today, we're going to be focusing on the strengths and weaknesses of the Axis tanks. With me today, uh, helping me do this, is the always reliable Johnny. Hello. Yes, he and I shall be going over all the armor as you see here. Pretty much just go, we'll take it from the top. I think the easy one of the meta right now, Martyr, S tier. It's cheap, dirt cheap, especially with Pact of Steel. It can pen most tanks. Like, there's no downside to getting this. And then, I think you would agree, when you get, like, tungsten rounds, it just it just pops off. This little tank destroyer basically brings back the old Company of Heroes 2 style of long-range tank destroyers, how it outranges everything, including the American Hellcat, despite being about a third of the fuel price. More accessible than all other tank destroyers. It has access to more upgrades. It's got really good veterancy. It's got really good DPS and rate of fire. There's, the only downside is survivability on this thing, but it has the range where you don't really have to worry about it. Yeah, it's dirt cheap by comparison. I mean, Doc, the Axis in general, have you have to worry about manpower, but for this thing, it's really worth how, like, the price is. And now, in regards to, like, not being good and being at the top of the meta than falling, uh, the M13, the Caro. This thing just got hit so hard with the Banhammer. I mean, it used to be S-tier, easy S-tier, but now it's, its bonuses have been nerfed, it's the strafing is better like like there's no real reason to go this anymore it severely limits this thing's ability to actually deal with allied medium and even heavy armor since the penetration bonus on the armor piercing rounds ability is significantly worse but it's just it's not the same it's, it's lost a lot of its power yeah it's it you could still use it somewhat but it's just not gonna do anything it's kind of it's there it's it's not bad right i think in regards to being bad right you could throw on the bottom, right? Uh, like on the bottom here. Uh, you could probably throw the Panzer IV in D tier. You could throw this for Doc, by the way. The Panzer IV, the Stug anti-tank variant, and the L6. All of these in that order, I think they are deserving of D because the first two you need to pay 150 fuel to acquire. And then the L6 is just like, why? It's, it, it, it was a meme at first, but... Uh, it, Everyone expects light armor. Everyone expects, like, this thing to be spammed. The moment people see it, they can shut it down relatively easy. Unless you're fighting new players. To be honest with you, I've never seen a DAC player call in their Panzer IV or Stug G assault gun. Uh, simply because if they're going to go and invest that much fuel in the call-in ability for tanks, they're going to go for the Tiger anyways. And the main drawback to these things, they're not bad in combat by any means. It's just their accessibility really kills their viability in any real strategy especially since their call-in timer is what 300 something seconds 360 seconds. five six minutes yeah 360 yeah six minutes yeah in this respect like i think the tiger is what you're going for and it in regards to power level in regards to what it can do i think easy s tier it's a heavy tank it can deal the damage it's good against all opponents it's expensive as hell but it's worth it maybe what would you say would you say bottom of S or top of A because of that accessibility? Like, you have to pay a premium to get this. I would say it's bottom of S, because once you once you pay that premium, it's it's there. It's yeah. there. It's, it's causing problems for everyone. It's very tough. It's gun hurts like hell. It smashes infantry. It's got decent mobility, all things considered. Its only real downside is the susceptibility to getting overwhelmed since it's a singular large centerpiece as opposed to multiple other things but even then as DAC you have access to a lot of cheap supporting options this vehicle should not get overwhelmed too badly if you're giving it a reasonable amount of support and it can generate so much value in a very short span of time no, yeah i completely agree with that assessment it's just a beast um so yeah bottom of s makes sense uh any tanks you want, you want to dive into next in regards to this tier list uh, specifically for the dock we'll hit the bear mocked after this uh let's pick the simavante the little italian oh show. god yeah that thing is probably going to be uh top of c for me at least it's only real upside is it's a relative easy access being the first ability and what only being three command points its penetration is okay bit mediocre it's all around in a general average vehicle it doesn't do anything extravagant like any of the other like fancy DAC vehicles higher up in the tier list it's just there it's an option i i would agree with that assessment in regards to it's just kind of a bleh version like it it which is weird right because like i think the standard stew is way better the only saving grace for it is that its accessibility is not trash like the stug g or panzer 4 for DAC. 
No, I would agree with that assessment. Now for the Stug, the uh, the Stug that you unlock, where would you put that? The Stug D sits above the Tiger in S tier. Yep. That thing is a menace to society. Yep. Uh, I knew I knew exactly where this was going because like it, these, I've I've had to kill so many of these suckers in the last two weeks because they are just they're like swarming insects. Like martyrs and Stugs are right now dominating the Axis meta in regards to what you pick, and then you throw out a Tiger at the late game. But like it's just. Uh, it's so annoying to fight these things. And yeah, they're so good. It can wipe infantry, like, even in smoke. Ground fire still works just as well. Like, there's no downside to calling this thing. Yeah, it, this thing has almost no scatter. It's got still got a little bit of scatter, but it's got very little to the point where you can pinpoint accurately pick out models of squads with your own ground fire. It smashes AT guns because the way Company Heroes 3 changed their calculations for uh, receiving a 50% cover negation bonus. So long story short, AT guns take a ton of damage from the Stug D. This is the DAC version of this. So it's got access to the upgrade centers, extra survivability and smoke grenade launchers. Most expensive aspect of it is unlocking the support elements upgrade, which is also 45 fuel in the tier two building. Other than that, these things are spammed. The only, like I've only seen effective counters being walls of anti-tank guns or swarms of infantry that are so large that the Stug D can't effectively engage them all at once. Absolutely easy S. Uh, I guess the kind of, we, we've got three left for Doc, right? We've got the Panzer III, we've got the Panzer III Command, and we've got the Flame Tank. And I think that since there, these are all Panzer Threes, they're all doing different things. I think it's that- Panzer IV Command Tank. Oh, Panzer IV Command Tanks, thank you. I honestly think the Panzer III is just like bottom of A whenever like we get other tanks, because it's just good. It's not like great, it's not like amazing or anything, but it does its job well. Uh, whereas like the command Panzer IV, it's like B, it's like good, it, but the short barrel doesn't, you know, it, it makes sure it can't do that much, you know? And then the flame is good because you can get it early and you can really mess up some enemy infantry. But that, I'd say it, it's an early game tank only. And once you miss the opportunity, it's just gone. So I'd say bottom of A tier is the Panzer III. Panzer IV command tank will probably sit at top of B. Like, it's a good buffing unit, but it, it itself requires a bunch of investment of other vehicles to be good. And the Panzer III Flame Tank is bottom of B, since it's, it's got a good niche, but it, that niche is very small. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment on all, on all fronts. Now let's dive into the Wehrmacht. Like, uh, I think that something like the Panzer IV, like the straight-up Panzer IV is like top of A. Counterpoint, since this is Wehrmacht, I'd say this is probably Wehrmacht's either best or second best vehicle, and this is deserving of S. I would put this probably, yeah, probably above the DAC Tiger, just because it's a lot more accessible yeah. and easy to use as opposed, and it's, yeah. No, I, I agree. The accessibility option is really where this thing shines, like, especially compared to its like big brother, the Panther. Panther, the Panzer V, it's, you just never access this thing. It's just, it's good against infantry on paper. It's good against most targets, but like, Unless you're getting a late, late game, you're never going to see this thing. I would probably put it actually low B. It gets access to spotting scopes and it has long range. Where the moment your tank is stationary, you get a ton of extra sight. And these things are tanky, so they they do a pretty good job at boxing with other vehicles. Next up, in regards to the heaviest armor, uh, let's go with the Tiger. Because this thing that you mentioned that the Panzer IV was arguably the top tier of Wehrmacht. I think this would probably be the you know, the actual top tier Wehrmacht. Uh, I would say it's probably top of A just because Breakthrough Battle Group is not that great. And this is such oh. a late, this is like even more late game than the uh, DAC Tiger. That's right. I, for some reason, I thought like all of them got this, but yeah, you're right. It's like nine command points, right? To unlock yeah, this. It's, it's stupidly expensive. It, once again, it's still a Tiger tank. There's nothing wrong with it performance wise. It's just. It's such a late game vehicle that even when you get it out, you might not even have the pop cap for it if you're running a full army. So that's why I say top of A. Yeah, and I, I'd agree with that. The accessibility option is something I, I would value greatly. And I think that it kind of kneecaps it a bit. What tank do you want to go after next? Let's go after the new kit on the block, the freshly br buffed Brumbar. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, this thing probably sits low A, high B. It's newly buffed which is great. It has go most pretty good anti-infantry performance, all things considered. So in my opinion, the Brumbar does really good against infantry, but if your enemy is rolling around with a bunch of like Sherman 76s or Matildas, 
it's it, you're gonna have a problem because you've invested a ton of your pop cap and fuel into a vehicle that can only damage infantry. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment as well because it's it's yeah, like Wehrmacht from Co. Two kind of has the Brum Bar and it kind of sits in a good place because it was so potent. Here, it's potent, but yeah, come to your you need that all rounder at the end to deal with like you need that Sherman, the Panzer Three, Panzer Four. The Brumbar is just, yeah, too expensive for for the role it wants to serve. Yeah, the problem is, especially since its role is anti-infantry, it's very hard for it to accrue back its cost, since yeah. fuel and manpower are very different cost-wise in terms of uh, the exchange ratio there. So this vehicle needs to do a ton, like, it would either need to be the most godly anti-infantry to be, like, higher up, or it would need to have decent anti-vehicle capabilities, but as it stands right now, it... It's good at what it does, but there's other vehicles can fulfill their role, its role plus uh, other roles at the same time. Back. Next up, let's go with the the Martyr Three, the other Martyr for the Wehrmacht. Yeah, so for a Martyr that's kind of stuck in a role that's that has other units doing it better, would you say just bottom of B because it's still a Martyr? Still a Martyr, but uh, Wehrmacht's anti-tank assets include the Pack Forty which gets camouflaged with veterancy, is all around one of the better anti-tank guns in the game. And the Jaeger spotted with a Shrek, which I shouldn't have to speak about if you've ever played a 4 before game and dealt uh, with someone who knows what they're doing with Wehrmacht, because they are essentially just the reincarnation of Company of Heroes 2 release Volksgrenadiers. Enough said. So in that case, then, for something that's uh, potent and I think pretty good, would you say the Stug, the anti-tank version for the Wehrmacht, uh, deserves to be at the bottom of A or high, uh, high B? I think it's it's i think it's rather potent for what it is you get it relative like you get it with the neville war for unlock so it's not so it does cost a little bit extra but like still armor still potent i s still can pen like a sherman pretty easily it's got pretty good armor and survivability in general its anti-tank capabilities are pretty decent it's all around a very solid mid-game choice for wehrmacht so i'd say low a it's it's got decent accessibility it's just all around a very very good but not great vehicle. I would agree with that bottom of A. But as for the anti-infantry capability, the uh, like the Flak Panzer is definitely where it's at. So the Flak Panzer Whirlwind, it's pretty good. It's got a ton of accessibility in terms of it's available as a build or a Colin if you're going for the Luftwaffe Battle Group. Its only downsides are really uh, it struggles against medium tanks because of course it's auto cannons and its armor is actually quite weak. Good at what it does, but it's it's not an outstanding vehicle. Would you say like? above the flat the flame panzer for b definitely has a like a niche time that it can be used like the dac pan or flame panzer but it also has better accessibility and it al it also brings anti-aircraft to the table so it can still be bought late game if you need an anti-aircraft unit and then last but certainly not least the command panzer 4 for the wehrmacht uh that's worth 2 cp compared to the tigers 9 so I would probably put it right underneath because at the one point, while it is uh, locked behind a bow group and technically it is easier to access, you know, you are sacrificing a tiger to get this thing. So there is a little bit of- C. Huh? I put it top of C because the boss is still great, but- But, but you don't get the tiger. That's the whole purpose of going for the doctor. I the know. Tiger. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I would completely agree. It's like C. It's like, why would you get this? There's no reason. Go for the tiger that you're never going to get because every game is too quick. Also, quick side note for anyone who's going to yell at us. Uh, I will place the Wehrmacht Stug D in the exact same place as the uh, Stug D for uh, DAC because they are functionally the same except the Wehrmacht one can, uh, can't get uh, building upgrades but can hull down. Well, in that case then, I think we have all the tanks uh, in the order. So anything you want to change, move around... I think we have a pretty good list. I think and what it shows in this case is Wehrmacht units are better overall in quality, but like on average, but Doc has both the highest highs and the lowest lows. Yeah, DAC is really, it continues to show that it is the all or nothing faction of yeah. either everything is going to go in your way and you're going to curb stomp or you're going to get yourself curb stomped while Wehrmacht is rather reliable. But yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think? Is there, is there anything we missed? Is there anything you would disagree with? Let us know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'm Grayshot151, accompanied with Johnny, as always, who is an awesome fire support for these uh, discussions. 
Uh, until next time, where hopefully I can do a how to open series or how to open video. Catch you all next time. Hello, everyone. This is Gray Shot 17 And before y'all go, let me give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Joey G240, Malab, Big Cooch, Afaria, Ace, Pyro Shark, Tony B95, Epic Pleb. Thank you all for your incredible support and in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything I do. Thank you, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.